Thank you for this in introduction. I first want to warmly congratulate the organizers of this high-level uh, conference, especially for providing uh, an opportunity to many different actors concerned about uh, freedom of religion or belief to share their experience between themselves first and also uh, this uh, audience. First of all, just a few words about our organization, Human Rights Without Frontiers, based in uh, Brussels created uh, 30 years ago. Among a number of issues, it deals, it has always dealt in those uh, 30 years with uh, freedom of religion or uh, belief for all. And I think that for all is important. It is non-political and it is uh, totally independent from any religious or non-religious worldview. Every day we distribute a, a press service about uh, religious freedom issues by emails to 10,000 uh, uh, people and institutions, members of the European Parliament, MPs of uh, uh, parliaments of 15 member states, uh, the media outlets, uh, embassies in Geneva, Brussels, New York, Washington, think tanks and so on. So our objective in fact is to share our concerns, but also concerns of other organizations with people and institutions that may have an impact on, uh, on policies. But let's come back to uh, the issues of uh, this uh, session. Uh, the anti-sect European umbrella organization, uh, FECRIS, in France, about which uh, <clears throat> Mrs. Patricia Duval has just uh, talked. FECRIS as it was said, uh, is also represented in uh, uh, Russia, hence the title of uh, uh, my paper, uh, The French Secular Russian Orthodox Connection, and I would even say the dangerous liaisons uh, between both of them. And this is devoted to the nefarious role of Fekris in uh, Russia. Fekris Member Association in Russia is the, and it's a very long name, Saint Irenaeus of Lyon Center for Religious Studies. It was founded in 1993 with the blessing of Patriarch of Moscow and all Russia, uh, Alexei II. And I think it's important to stress at this point. The center is also a missionary uh, faculty department of Saint Tikhon's uh, Orthodox University in uh, Moscow, uh, the objective of which is allegedly, and I quote, to spread credible information on doctrines and activities of totalitarian sects and destructive cults, end of the quote. Since then, Alexander Dvorkin has been the president of the center affiliated to the Russian Orthodox Church. The Saint Irenaeus of Lyon Center is the head of another organization, the Russia Association of Centers for Religious Studies and Sectarian Studies. Its president is, again, Alexander Dvorkin. You saw his picture before, Mr. Trevigny uh, <clears throat> uh, showed his uh, picture. And um, I would say that in this organization that uh, Dvorkin is heading, around him there are two vice presidents. One is an archpriest, a second one is an archpriest, and the third one is a priest. So all clerics of the Russian Orthodox Church, and I would say all radical clerics of the church. A part of the St. Irenaeus Center, there is a global network of so-called parents' initiatives and other similar organizations in Russia uh, <clears throat> which are fighting against uh, sects. There are also a number of so-called rehabilitation centers which aim at reconverting followers of non-traditional religions back to orthodoxy. Fekris Member Association in Russia and its affiliates are all financed by the Russian Orthodox Church and engage in the fight 
against evangelicals, Pentecostals, Mormons, Moonies, Baha'is, Jehovah's Witnesses, Falun Gong practitioners, Scientologists, and so on, and so on. Alexander Dvorkin is well known for popularizing the term totalitarian sects, a term used by defenders of the spiritual security concept of Russia to designate peaceful religious denominations considered as potential threats to the hegemony of the Orthodox Church. What is that spiritual security concept? In fact, it emerged in the 2000, the year 2000 already. And I must say that even I was not aware of the importance uh, uh, of that event. What is the official definition of the spiritual security uh, concept? If we have a look at the official text uh, published at that time, it says, and I quote, and then I will comment, first the quotation, assurance of the Russian Federation's national security also includes protecting the cultural and spiritual moral legacy and the historical traditions and standards of public life and preserving the cultural heritage of all Russia's peoples. There must be a state policy to maintain the population's spiritual and moral welfare, prohibit the use of airtime to promote violence or base instance, instincts, and counter the adverse impact of foreign religious organizations and missionaries. End of the quotation. This concept of spiritual security has been used by all Russian ideologues. In 2003, Viktor Zorkalitsev, a communist parliamentary deputy, stated, and I quote, freedom of conscience has boundaries, and these boundaries can be defined by a single expression, spiritual security. So this is an important concept that we must absolutely keep in mind to understand, for example, what is happening for the moment in Russia with religious movements of foreign origins. Spiritual security then serves as the basis for campaigns based on paranoia of foreign enemies and foreign ideas and for measures to unduly restrict freedom of religion or belief of Russian citizens who have decided to follow a non-consensual spiritual path. Members of the Fekris in Russia play prominent roles in this campaign and in the repressive policy towards new religious movements of foreign origin, even when they have been established in Russia for a very long time. While the Constitution and laws in France provide for a total separation of state and religion and the respect of all creeds, the Russian state supports and privileges the Russian Orthodox Church as a key actor in the implementation of President Putin's spiritual security concept and policy. Concretely, this spiritual security uh, policy goes hand in hand with a religious cleansing policy targeting non-orthodox movements who are, which are perceived as a threat to the identity of the Russian people. Recent examples are the ban of Jehovah's Witnesses uh, last year. That concerns more than 170,000 people, Russian citizens, in almost those cases. The subsequent imprisonment of a Danish Jehovah's Witnesses who was married to a Russian uh, woman. The jailing of several members now of the Church of Scientology. The ban on some peaceful movements, such as Tablighi Jamahat followers and Said Dorsi followers. The misuse of the law against extremism and the anti-missionary laws of Varovaya. So the question is, how can France, a secular country, support and almost entirely finance 
a French anti-sect organization, FECRIS, whose vice president, Dvorkin, has called for years for such a policy of elimination of non-Orthodox and foreign religious movements. But let's come back to the personality of Alexander Dvorkin, Vice President of FECRIS, Director of St. Irenaeus of Lyon Center, and also many, many other things uh, <clears throat> linked to the Orthodox uh, Church, but also to the Ministry of Justice. He was appointed by the Minister uh, of uh, Justice at the head of the, the Expert Council for conducting state religious studies uh, analysis. And that council is used by Putin's system, I would say, to make it short, to prosecute and persecute uh, non-Orthodox religious movements to declare their literature extremist on spurious, absolutely spurious grounds. What do internationally experts uh, in the freedom of religion issues think of Dvorkin and of those uh, orthodox uh, organizations. Let's take, for example, Professor Robert Blint, uh, professor at the University of Tennessee, and also a former law specialist for USERF, the US Commission of International uh, Religious Freedom. This is what he recently said about uh, Fikris and Fikris vice president, and I quote, Russia has long relied on so-called expert studies for the purposes of categorizing and prosecuting certain religious groups. For example, in February 2009, the Russian Ministry of Justice established an expert religious studies council. This body had the power to investigate religious organizations and reach conclusions regarding, among other things, whether the organization ex espoused extremist views. At the time, it was chaired by Alexander Dvorkin, an individual who lacked appropriate academic credentials as a religion specialist and was already known as Russia's most prominent anti-cult activist. Often, individuals appointed to such councils or even those tapped as prosecution experts in judicial proceedings lack necessary and even basic qualifications. Another uh, opinion, I will not quote it, but coming from uh, uh, Russia uh, itself is uh, Dr. Roman Lunkin, head of the Center for Religion and Society Studies at the Russian Academy of Sciences in Moscow and president of the Union of Experts on Religion and Law. He shares, let's say, roughly the same opinion as uh, Professor Blit. In an article uh, published a few months ago uh, in Religia e Pravo, Dvorkin also said orthodox, it was also said orthodox activists, sorry, <coughs> orthodox activists as Roman Silantiev or Alexander Dvorkin based discrimination on myths about national security and how spies exist everywhere and poor citizens supposedly do not know who is preaching to them. So there are several quotations uh, <clears throat> like uh, these ones. I will come to another and last example uh, of the vice president of FECRIS attacking the Hindus. Several years ago, there was an attempt to ban the holy scriptures of uh, Hinduism. Such a move was only possible because of actions of anti-sect actors in Russia, including Alexander Dvorkin and all his movements uh, uh, around. Fortunately, in 2011, a Russian court in Tomsk dismissed a claim to ban an edition of the Hindu Bhagavad Gita. Hindus in Russia have accused Alexander Dvorkin of hate speech against their community and their religion. They have also complained that the son of the leader of their community in Moscow and his family had been victim of attacks because of, it, 
of its hate speech. Last year, in February, a rally was held in the capital of India in front of the Russian embassy. The protesters demanded to stop anti-religious activities of Alexander Dvorkin. They accused him of denigrating their religion and insulting the feelings of millions of Hindus. The protesters in Delhi burned an effigy of Dvorkin, called him an enemy of India, and asked Vladimir Putin to protect Hindus from persecution in Russia. In conclusion, all non-Orthodox communities are concerned about or under threat of the anti-sex uh, movements in uh, Russia. All Orthodox religious denominations and their members have been in attacked in one way or another by Alexander Dvorkin, Vice President of FECRIS, and is uh, Irenaeus of Lyon's Center for Religious Studies. FECRIS in France has never disavowed him when he was using hate speech against Jehovah's Witnesses, Evangelicals, Protestants, Baptists, Seventh-day Adventists, Muslims, Hindus, and so on, and so on. Fekris in France has never disavowed him, even when he was taking sides with China, for example, at an anti-sect conference in uh, Beijing, specifically targeting Falun Gong, although the repression of this group had been repeatedly denounced by the UN Commission of Human Rights, the European Parliament, the US Department of State, Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and other human rights organizations. For years, France, a secular country, has almost fully financed Fekris, as I said. Although its vice president and its clerical Russian member states organizations stigmatize, defame, and persecute non-Orthodox groups in Russia. We think that time has come for the new president of France, President Macron, and his prime minister, Edouard Philippe, to reconsider the privileges that have been granted under and by their predecessors to Fekris. Thank you for your attention.